The Bible said they looked unto him and they were lightened and their faces were no more ashamed. There is a God truly in the midst of his people. There is a God who rules in the affairs of men. He said, I will look up to the hills from where cometh my help. He said, my help cometh from the Lord who made the heaven and the earth. forever you will be on the lamp upon the truth so gladly bow my knee to worship you so help me along help me disappoint us we vow to give you glory honor and praise the help we need shall be made available today this week will be our week of help you exceed our expectations and your name alone be glorified we thank you father in jesus mighty name we pray amen if you are not feeling cold this morning let me say lady amen if I love and well in the service this morning, let me shout hallelujah. hallelujah. Would you please help me put your hands together for the Almighty and please let me have your seat. Thank you, Kaya. Kaya, the villain code. Amen. So I look to you for my help. You have me alone. So have me alone. Have me Shout chapter 1 and verse 8. Thank you. Thank you. All right, a few persons are not in church today. A lot of persons travel on permission. And uh, Sister Mary Lubank is watching that way from Kano right now. Uh, she left for Kano yesterday. Quite numbers of persons feel engagement and the rest of that. But I know we are going to have a good time. Somebody say amen to that. All right. Joshua chapter 1 and verse 8. He said, this book of the law shall not depart out of thy mouth. He said, you shall meditate there in day and night. He said, then shall that make your he said, observe to do all that is written therein. He said, then shall that make your way prosperous and you shall have what? A good success. This morning I'll be speaking to us again empower to succeed part two. Many of us were here on Sunday and then we, last Sunday and then we consider them power to succeed part one. We deal about the four D's that is needed for success. We talk about determination. We talk about dedication. We talk about discipline and diligence. This morning, we are going to move a little bit further. If you are not in service last Sunday, you can get that message for free. Amen. Just get to the technical stand and they'll give you for free. Let me say this. No one is proud of a failure. 
Whatever thing that ever make your back to be on the ground, react to it. Let me say this. It failure with every passion and with every being around your life. Do not in any way resign to fate to tell yourself that if I'm not successful, at least I've tried. Every anybody that anybody that actually write an exam and the person get 30%, the person tried. But the trial to which the person did is not actually commendable enough to celebrate the person for success. Somebody who got 20% also tried. You agree with me that the person tried. The person actually pushed and attempted to see if the person will be successful. But yet, that which could, that which the result that actually come out from this kind of a fellow cannot actually guarantee that this person is success. But please listen to me people. There is an empowerment of the spirit which I'm going to discuss with us today that actually furnishes the reality called success. Everyone has a power source to which that fuel your result. If you are not genuinely born again and then you look for an arithmetic source to say to actually have a power source to put for your success. Now the Lord began to speak to me now. There is a young there is a man who actually close to us. This man did um this man had first class and then asked a little bit of much of distinction in every school this person has attended but the kind of job that this person is doing is not glorifying god one day the man woke up to me and then we began to pray together and this person is of the other faith and i was praying one day and the lord spoke to me my wife will know what i'm talking about now and the lord spoke to me and he said the power source of this young man cannot fool where the reality is looking for let me say this again every christian belongs to a reality of the almightiness of God. And this almightiness of God fuels our result. Meaning we have a power backing that is actually a reality in God. When you have this power backing that is a reality in God, it means whatever power that want to cut short our life or that want to stunt our success, the Lord God of heaven will arise. Isaiah 59, the Bible said, the hand of the Lord, you know, verse 19 said, he said, when the enemy shall come against you like a flood, the Bible said, the spirit of the Lord shall raise a standard against. That is to say that we have a standard, a backing, Every child of God has a backing to succeed. Without a power source, nobody will succeed. There are many of us who have tried a lot of things and you know that you are not empowered enough to deliver that result and that's why you didn't get it. There are intelligent people. There are people who have kept to principles. There are people who have actually read a lot of success book. They've engaged it but yet they could feel a limitation. And you look at somebody who does not really know what you know. And the person begins to enjoy free ride. They say, I'm enjoying grace. Yes, truly you can call it grace. But everyone needs to come to the reality that when God begins to fall, when God begins the reason for your advancement and your success, you are guaranteed. It is important that all of us have this backing and this consciousness that God remains our power to succeed. Let me say this. There is a spirit dimension that furnishes results for everyone to be successful. This is what I'm going to discuss with us this morning. Having to understand the subject of the Holy Spirit. Oh. Let me say, do you know that success is spiritual? I don't know if you agree with me. The conventional people who sings secular song, they have, have studied about few things around secular song before. There is a demon called Baphomet. They call that demon the god of fame and wealth. All you need to do is to sell your soul and as long as you donate your soul that from here you know you are going to go into hell. They give you fame and they give you what? Wealth. And they, be, they make them an idol. And this idol to which they make them, they come to the open and they sing a particular 
kind of song. They come with a particular kind of slang that everybody will begin to do. And then they will lead people unconsciously to the worship of Satan. And when they do this, they will begin to put a rating on them. Now, say so, so and so and so actually been able to do this as these numbers of cars, as this number of houses, as this number of businesses, and he has been able to convince many to the worship of Satan. Now, in that regard, that man look as if he's successful. How many of you agree with me? There are many of us, if it is only paper success we are looking for, we are not looking at the God, the actually full result. The greed and materialism will consume us. And this is why this subject is very important. Be careful what sponsor your result. Every success is spiritual. Nobody will be successful in the energy of the flesh. So it takes the sufficiency of the spirit of God or sufficiency of satanic spirit to actually succeed. All of the persons who do all manner of things. You see, I've met people, have been privileged to meet few politicians, and I can begin to mention names. Have been privileged to meet head of parastatas, head of hospitals, and head of few things have been privileged by God to meet. But I can tell you that the people you think they are successful, many of them switch to the lane of the devil to actually have a power source. There are many of us who have visited Abalis before. Who has consulted? You see, the devil is not on Facebook. There is a particular Facebook account. I, I don't want to talk about it deeper. That I came in contact with. That even Christian go there to look for predictions. What will become of me? Would that lady marry me? Would that brother marry me? Is that person right for me? This person happens to a lot of them are on TikTok. Be careful what you subscribe to. Let it be that it is God that is sponsoring your results. And this is why this empowerment for success is important. That every one of us will switch to the lane of the almighty God. There is a standard that is already raised. There is a power source that is made available for everyone that is truly in the Christ. The power of God find expression through you if you yield to it. You will not need to subscribe to the power of the devil to get anything done. The Bible said their sorrow shall be multiplied. That hasting after another God. If you hasting after another God to succeed, he said God is too slow. Let me try my village people. You will try that. You will look as if the problem you have in the office you scale through. But don't be surprised. The Bible said their sorrow shall be multiplied. That what? That hasting after what? Another God. If you look for another God to actually sustain any result or to actually get a level of success, the Bible said their sorrow shall be multiplied. There is nothing good in Satan. He came to steal, to kill, and to destroy. Whatever he's going to do is just to entice you so that you can become partaker of his ministry. There are money you should not have. It is better to suffer in integrity than to sell up your soul to succeed. It is better it is better to maintain integrity than to open up your leg to actually get a job. If it is not the lost doing, it is not marvelous in our side. It is the lost doing that is marvelous. Whatever you cannot write on paper and then genuinely is a result that is for by the spirit of the living God. Can I tell you this? It's not a success that we should applause. But let me say this, which is actually my topic for today. It is the spirit of God that makes the power of God real to us. Having understand the ministry of the Holy Spirit, it was bring us into the realm of the empowerment that we need to succeed. Yeah. The Bible speaking is said, as many as received him, John chapter 1 and verse 12, to as many as received him, to them he gave power to become what? Sons of God. Even as many as believe in his name. Having to come into the Christ brings you into a realm of power. Having to receive the Lordship of Christ. Don't forget, 
In First Corinthians chapter one and verse twenty-four, the Bible recorded that it said, "Christ, the power and the wisdom of God." So when you receive Christ into your life, you actually come into the reality of the power of God. John chapter one and verse twelve said, "As many as receive Him, to them He gave what." power to become what sons of god there is a need for an empowerment to actually be called a child of god now there is a contention over every soul that is not born again when a soul actually receives christ it means there is a power display and that power display there is actually a defeat in the camp of the devil to actually make you a child of god and that's why the bible said there is joy in heaven over every one soul that repents If you are genuinely born again, the power of God has gone to work to actually defeat Satan over your life. And then you are empowered to become a child of God. Now, empowerment to become a child of God is empowerment to succeed because the God you are coming to serve is not a failure. There is no failure in God, people, believe me. No failure in God. We have never read in the account of scripture that God ever failed once. So every child of God that carries the seed of God in him, that carries God on the inside, that seed cannot fail. As many as receive him, to them he gave power to become what? Sons of God. Now let me say this. There is, oh, this is not in my notes. I don't know how I get here. I don't know how do I get here. And maybe I should stick to my notes because of time. Now, the Bible began to teach us in after the Apostle chapter 1 and verse 8. He said, Ye shall receive power. Now, this is this is where I'm going. He said, Ye shall receive power after that the Holy Ghost has what? Come upon you, and you shall bear witness unto me in Jerusalem, in Judea. And Samaria and to the uttermost part of the earth. Now listen to this. They shall receive power. Now, after the apostle chapter 1 and verse 8, make it clear that having encounter with the Spirit of God open us up to the dimension of His power. So, if you want to enjoy your Christian life and you want to be successful, having to understand that God is the basis of your success, you really need to understand the ministry of the Holy Ghost at work in you and at work through you to succeed in Isaiah chapter 11 and verse 1 to 3 let's check this is not in my note or I will get back to the note don't worry I think I'm trying to help someone here there's somebody here with a question here I hear the Lord speak to me now there's somebody here with a question, and I think the Lord will, the Lord will begin to help you. He said, Isaiah chapter 11, and verse 1 to 3, he said, There shall come forth a rod from the stem of Jesse, and a branch shall grow out of his root. He said, The Spirit of the Lord shall rest upon him. Are you seeing this? The Spirit of wisdom and understanding, the Spirit of counsel and might, the Spirit of knowledge and of the fear of the Lord, and his and his and his delight in his fear of the Lord, and he shall not judge by sight of his sight, nor decide after his hearing. King James said, this new King James, he said he shall make him of quick understanding. Now, the dimension of the spirit of God at work in the life of a believer carries the spirit of wisdom, carries the spirit of counsel, carries the spirit of understanding carries the spirit of knowledge and of the fear of the Lord and the, and the spirit of the Lord. I wish I have time to bruise over this. When this begin to work at you, how can you feel? You shall receive power after the Holy Ghost has come upon you. That the Holy Spirit is actually the custodian of the power of God. And the Bible begins to expose us to the ministry of the Holy Ghost. That when the Holy Spirit comes upon you, you receive power. But among other things that make you powerful, there are the dimension of the Spirit of God. Talk about the Spirit of the Lord. Talk about the Spirit of wisdom. Talk about the Spirit of understanding. Talk about the Spirit of counsel. Talk about the Spirit of might. Talk about the Spirit of knowledge and not the fear of the Lord. The Bible says, 
shall make you of quick understanding. Having to enjoy the power of God at salvation according to John chapter 1 and verse 12 and you have actually waited upon the Lord to receive his power through the encounter with the Holy Ghost. And when this happened, what happened? You begin to enjoy some dimension of his operation. Among the dimension of the oppression of the spirit of God is that the spirit of wisdom come to rest upon you. Oh, Maria Takabari Ateka. People that are wise are powerful people. People that have understanding are powerful people. People that are knowledgeable are powerful people. The Spirit of the Lord rests upon you genuinely. Powerful people. The Spirit of the fear of the Lord begins to walk through you. Powerful people. The Bible said it shall make you of quick understanding. Now if you trace the success story of Christ... This was at work in him. This was actually spoken to Jesus in prophecy. That a rod shall come out of the stem of Jesse. And what you used to identify him. That truly this is the reality that has come to empower us to succeed. Is that this dimension of the spirit of God will begin to walk through him. And as, as he has sent Christ, so has he sent us. So everyone that genuinely have encounter with salvation, have encounter with the ministry of the spirit among other things that will be working through you is this dimension of the spirit. It is called the seven spirit of God. When this begins to work through you, you don't need to go to Annapolis to get anything done. This is my pain. You don't need to look for a sweet sayer. You don't need to for you see many of us have Kebari I met a lady some days ago no, not many months back so I was having an online meeting and then this lady came up and then the Lord opened my eyes to see how the lady forfeited a good relationship because a prophet says so. One of the things we taught in marriage class is for people to be empowered to make right decisions for themselves. If you like, you, you see, can I say this? God has paid me for that class. That singular obedience, God has paid me. When God tells you to do something and you genuinely, I'm not supposed to say this, but it's true. When God sends you to do something and you genuinely obey, God pays. I told you about one person who listened to that message and he said, he said, wow, this is amazing. The English was too much. I couldn't even pick the English. The only thing I can pick there is, I can I send you a love offering? I could pick that one. I couldn't pick it. But I can send you a love offering. I had that. And that love offering came in a few dollars. I must be honest to you. Among other things, that I've seen as beneficiary of that singular obedience has shifted my level in a lot of things. And this is why whatever thing that is actually an assignment in the church that we give should be taken seriously. The reason why many of us consulted soothsayer and we are not empowered to do the things we are supposed to do is simply because the things we are supposed to take serious, we are not taking them seriously. That lady... The Lord opened my eyes and I began to speak to the lady. I said, I'm seeing too many voices speaking to you at the same time. This and this and this. You abandoned this guy for the sake of this. He said, it's true, sir. And then the lady and I had to talk later after the broadcast. When the lady, then the lady opened up some few things to me. I know that if that lady continues in that regard, that lady won't marry well. If you have too many voices speaking to you, it's a sign of irresponsibility on your part. The Lord God has paid too much for you to be empowered and to be able to make right decisions yourself. Christians are too lazy. That's the problem. Can the spirit of wisdom, the spirit of the Lord resting upon you, the spirit of wisdom, the spirit of understanding, might and counsel, the spirit of the, can this be resting upon you and you're still in a sweet say at 12 and professor? We will always get to every junction in our life where we will need help. Because there are people ahead of us. But should not make us irresponsible. Shift in our bodies. To, now let me say this. A, lo, a lady called me in France yesterday. She's called more than three, four, five times now that I don't get the call. Because what she wanted me to step into is not something. She's been duped in the name of a spiritual pastor. So she's shifting the burden and they're trying to tell me some few things. I, I stopped picking the call. It's painful. And I, this is why I'm taking my time to be simple about this. So that all of us will get it. Hate every other alternative that you are seeking for success. Hate it. If it is not God, it is trouble. 
their sorrow shall be multiplied. Psalm 16 and verse 4. Their sorrow shall be multiplied. That is thing after another God. Whatever you get outside God will bring sorrow. The Holy Spirit is at work in you if you are genuinely born again. And the dimension of the Spirit of God that actually comes to play in your life comes with this dimension. The Spirit of wisdom. The Spirit of... If you have... If you have... The Spirit of wisdom cancelled working through you, what else again do you need? Understanding the ministry of the Holy Spirit is our comforter, is our teacher, is our counselor. Right? Psalm 16 and verse 24. Oh, sorry. John chapter 16 and verse 24. If you read the Amplified Version, he gave us the sixth ministry of the Holy Ghost to us. You can enjoy a strengthener. You can enjoy a teacher. I don't want to go to that because of time. You can enjoy all of that. So having to know the Holy Spirit is initiation into the power realm of God. Is what? Initiation into what? The power realm of God. When the Holy Spirit is truly at work in you, and the Holy Spirit is resting upon you, you understand the dimension of the Spirit, you enjoy the ministry of the Holy Spirit, oh, Baria Katusi, you begin to enjoy the gifting of the Spirit. You are powerful already. Believe me. Among the gift of the Spirit, we, we dealt with that last, uh, last uh, month, so I'm not going to preach it with you. If you miss that service, go and get it in. The gift of the spirit talks about the gift of healing, interpretation, God working of miracles, and all of that. All of that begin to walk through you. You are powerful. You don't need to look for any Satan or any prophetic nonsense to get anything done. The power of God is already at work in you. There is need for power to succeed, but let it be that your power is gotten from God. And how do you go about it? Having an encounter with the Spirit of God. Understanding His dimension. Understanding His ministry. And enjoying His giftings. Make you, make you powerful. You can make decisions. You are make of quick understanding. When you need comfort, He's there. When you need a teacher, He's there. When you, when you begin to work in His gifting. And the Bible said, a man's gifts make room. Make room for him. People do not subscribe to whatever will destroy you. Please do not. They say it's not a pastor. Hmm? You see, it's a pastor. It's not just a pastor like that. But he might tell you to bring 17 coconuts and then you put some... Oh, so no, oh, no, no, sir. No, sir. No, sir. The 17 coconuts put like five candles. You see, the man, he used to say in Jesus' name, no, their sorrow shall be multiplied. That hasting after another God, seeking alternative outside God will destroy you. There are many people who there are many people who wear suits today. Have you wear suit today? Stand on the pulpit and behind what is fueling their resort is witchcraft. Be careful. Be careful. In your quest to succeed, be careful where you go. Be careful what you do. Don't be driven to succeed outside God. Don't. Don't be greedy for gain to the point that you consider alternative outside God. Don't. The Lord will give us understanding. In the name of Jesus. Now let me start what I have today. Yeah. That was introduction. Should I start preaching now? Amen. Alright, there is a spiritual dimension to success. Behind every happening is, a man, is actually a spirit. That you are alive right now simply means your spirit is alive. Do you agree with me? Everything working, there is something working through it. Everything moving, there is something moving through it. Every successful person has a power source. There is a spiritual dimension that furnishes people for success. When you come into that realm, failure will be broken over your life for life. I just help you that you can lay hold on the ministry of the spirit, understand the gifting of the spirit, and understand the dimension of the spirit. That will help you. But there are three things that makes you function in the spirit to succeed. Number one is the word of God. Number one is what? Everyone that is that want to enjoy 
the fountain of the power and the spirit of God to succeed must be one who genuinely understand the word of God. Study Mark chapter 4 or let's do Matthew chapter 4. Read from verse 1 to 14 talking about Jesus. When, when, the, when Satan came to tempt him after he has fasted seven day, uh, 40 days and 40 nights, the only thing that Jesus could quote back to actually fight the devil was the word of God. If the word of God is not what motivates and drive your quest for success and it's not what driving the school of power people use you will fail nothing defend you in the days of trouble like the word at work in you the bible speaking in psalm 42 that psalm 40 and verse 7 he said among the school you have written unto me i've come unto you out of the school you have written about me i've come unto you. Colossians chapter 3 number 16 says, let the word of God dwell in you richly in all wisdom. The word of God can actually connect you to the fountain of the spirit and of the power of God. When the word of God is what guide that business, it will not fail. When the word of God is what guide that marriage, it will not fail. When the word of God is a principle to which you coin for to succeed, you are actually engaging the power of God. Because God cannot deny his word, it means your own success cannot be denied. Can I say amen to that? Everyone that will operate from the fountain of the power and of the spirit of God must be a genuine student of the word of God. Let me say this. Your success is directly proportional to the level of the word of God at work in you. At work in you. And that is why they can tell you, they say, excuse me sir, would you share what you know? Whether you like it or not, doesn't make you a preacher. This is the problem. When we study well, we think it makes us to be a preacher. It's not so. All of us do devotion in our house for every genuine Christian. What are we teaching our children? What, let me, believe me, believe what I'm about to say now. If you, if you are truly knowledgeable about the word of God, it will reflect in your children. Because that becomes the basis to which you transfer to them. There are some things I don't want to say here. When God bless us with one of our babies, so, okay, maybe I should put it this way. One day I went to pray and I prayed very long. I thank God that all those all those people are not in church again. Those days I used to, anytime I stroll in the night to pray. When I'm coming back, I don't know who taught those people. Then I wasn't married really. They would have been waiting for me at the entrance of the church when I'm coming. Why? Just for me to lay hand on them. So one day I was finding out what they were doing. Truly, I've like prayed maybe about six hours, maybe about seven hours. Sometimes I'm tired. My leg is hot and all of that. And then people will be waiting at the entrance of the church. They know that they went to pray. When I come, they will be kneeling down. I will lay hand and then they will go. Truthfully speaking, it was working for them. Things were changing. One day I said, I'll stop this thing. So I find my way not to do that thing again and I discourage them. So I don't allow them to know my timing anymore. So when we gave back to one of our baby, that experience came back to me. I went to pray one day and then something, something just came on me and then I know this was, I know it was God. The anointing was so mighty, my hand was shaking. It. And I look at one of our baby and I put my hand. And I saw this particular baby manifest after a particular order. Joshua chapter 34 and verse 9. Say Joshua was filled with wisdom. When who? When Moses did what? Do, sorry, is it the Tanomi? Sorry. The Tanomi chapter 34 and verse 9. I will say together. Yes, correct. He said, Now Joshua the son of Noah was filled with what? For Moses as what? 
when a carrier lays hand on someone, I didn't know what led me here. When a carrier lays hand on someone, there is a spirit dimension that flows to the person. This was my understanding. And I think that was what they were doing that time. But I never understood it the way they were doing it. So this scripture came alive to me one day. I went to pray and then I felt some few things on me and I looked at those and I said, in the name of Jesus. And I saw that person begin to manifest after a particular order. Now listen to this. It is what you know that will reflect in your children. Believe me. The of chapter 30, let's read verse 9. Verse 19, sorry. He said, I called heaven and heart as witness against you. And I've said before you, life and what? Blessing and what? Therefore choose what? That you and who? So if you choose blessing, it will even affect your children. So what you know, reflects in the life of your children. That particular manifestation of scripture that I know, and having to labor in the spirit, just do one thing to one thing and lay hand and then it began to reflect. I saw it. I saw it. There are some few things I've seen around this particular child of ours. I know it's not ordinary. I know it. I remember a particular time. There's no day the child will go to school. I was going to school. I won't bring back money. How say who give you money? Even to which day was that? Was it Wednesday? Yes. He came back and brought money. I said, who gave you money? He said, so, 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 and so. So, 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 and so. So, 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 and so. Uh, I don't want to share that testimony. It's, it's deep. What you know will reflect in the life of your children. If you're truly knowledgeable and you operate in the fountain of the power and the spirit of God, having to furnish that reality by the word of God, it will show in the life of your children. It will show. You are not only reading Bible for yourself. You are reading to secure a generation. You can give direction to your life. You can give direction to your children. You can be empowered and enjoy the power of God. Now look at this. I met with one of my uncle and he was beginning to give me some understanding. He said, I used to read the book of Moses in the quest of power into this and the rest of that. I told him, I said, I won't need to do all of that. I already read the Bible and I'm fully intoxicated with what the Bible has done for me. What, is it, what book again will I be looking for? To start looking for speaking one language to one language to make some feel incantations to do anything. I said, I won't need all of that. So if you are studying the Bible, operating in the fountain of the Spirit and the power of God, it will reflect in the life of the children. Few of the guys who hang around me believe that sometimes when I begin to share a few things with them, I know it's showing in them. They've not seen me do a lot of things because I'm guided by the word. It's easy to even correct and to reprove. And to say, this is what it is. This is what it is. Let me tell you this. The choice you make and the fountain to which you are connected to will show in the life and in the destiny of your children. The same way you hand over success to them if you are successful. The same way you hand over failure to them if you are a failure. Number two, because of time. Having to enjoy the power of God, the fountain of His power and of His Spirit to bad success. Number one is the Word of God. Number two is praying in the Spirit. Is what? Do you want to enjoy the power of God to succeed? Having to operate in the Spirit, having, having encounter with the Word of God. Number two is what? Pray in the Spirit. If you are born again and then you are genuinely baptized in the Holy Ghost with the evidence of speaking in tongues, you are not speaking in tongues of failure. Let's study 1 Corinthians chapter 14. Verse 
first Corinthians 14. I'll read verse 2. He said, For he who speak in an unknown tongue speaketh not unto man, but who? Unto God. He said, For no man understandeth him. He said, Ah, well, that in the spirit he speaks what? If they are speaking to God, are you speaking failure? One of the things that empower to succeed, having an encounter with the word of God and operating the word of God. With the fountain of his spirit and his power is to move to a realm where you pray more in, in the Holy Ghost. Do you want to be successful? Learn to pray more in the Holy Ghost. You see, I'm a practitioner in this, I can tell you. And I've tried to bring this culture to the church. Pray more. There are mysteries that cannot be dissolved until you pray. And not praying in English language, but praying in the language of the spirit. Because success is spiritual, the mystery behind the issue around your life is spiritual. What you need to do to combat this, you really need to pray in tongues. I prayed in tongues before, and the Lord said, Remove this table from here, put it this way. I'm telling you the truth. I prayed in tongues to the point that God would tell me this is the clothes you should wear today. I prayed in tongues before the Lord would tell me this is what you need to do to this person to come. I prayed in tongues that God has given me some solutions that I will never forget in a hurry. Let me tell you one. I told, I've, told, I've said this story before. Sometimes ago I wanted to do my final year defense. And as about doing my final year defense, there is a particular lecturer that was there that happens to like one of my friends. And this particular friend of mine, we went to the same secondary school. I'm privileged to know the parent. As a matter of fact, our father happens to be one of our teachers in the secondary school where I finished. So everybody honors them, kind of. So the lady and I happens to be in the same class in the university. So automatically we became close by default. I can go and eat in the house, play to my house, and then we are just having a good time. I never knew there was actually a particular lecturer trying to hide this particular girl. And then, it looked as if I was a barrier. And the lecturer sent the girl to me one day, he said, I'll make sure that boy will not graduate. So when I was told, <laughs> hey, I wasn't afraid, but I know God will do something. It was the time I just gave my life to Christ. And when I was to write, do my final year defense, bring my, all my whatever to come and defend in front of the people. When I saw the panel that was sitting, I saw the man there. Ah. A particular code came on me. I know if I will be successful at this panel, something needs to happen. I went to the back of the hall. God is my witness. This is the truth. I went to the back of the hall and I turned to the back of the hall. It was about two, three persons before me. About three or four persons before me to do. And if those four persons did their own, I'll be the next. When I saw the timetable, when I saw when I saw the timetable and I saw the people sitting, I went to the back of the hall. Paco, Shekaka, Rita, Kelu, Shika. I was there. I prayed in tongues. I, and I wasn't playing. I wasn't praying. I don't care anybody who sees me. I wasn't careful anybody who hears me. I wasn't, I didn't, I'm not careful if anybody will make mockery of me. This is the problem with some of us who wants to still be normal to people. He said, no, I don't want to. What are you saying? No, sir. No, sir. Be proud. Be proud of his language of heaven. If you pray in an unknown tongue, the Bible says you speak not unto man. Rather, you speak unto God. Even if they don't understand you, in the spirit, you are dissolving mysteries. In the spirit, there are mysteries that need to be dissolved in your life before you succeed. There are a lot I will share in this. My wife is a witness to a lot, to a lot. There are many things you don't understand. Shika, pe, kushi, kika, kika. You can't go like that in two or three. Something will happen. A new chapter will open. So I went to the back of the hall. I'm not ashamed. Just in inside campus, people were passing. I didn't send them. With my suit, I remember the red tie I was wearing that day and the pink shirt. That's like this. I hold my suit. It wasn't even suit, it was coat. So the thing was very big. So I had the thing not to dissolve. Shikaka, piku, kiku, shikaka, kika. 
I was there shouting like a, I was there shouting like a fool. But it was exactly 17 minutes. You look as if something tapped me. I said, go inside. And I came inside. As I stepped inside the hall, they just called my name. And I came to the front. And they're supposed to slide what you have done, like a summary you have on your PowerPoint, so that you'll be explaining. I didn't look at PowerPoint. I didn't know what came on me. All the PowerPoint, I didn't look at it. The note I'm supposed to be using to tell them this is what I wrote, I didn't look at it. I downloaded a whole manual that I wrote for that for that uh, defense on my head. I began to talk. The, this, I, I still remember some of the things I said. The, this thing due to the national, to this, to this, to this. When I was saying all of that, I discovered that I got the attention of everybody. All the students that were playing at the back stopped playing. They began to listen very keenly. All the lecturers were surprised. There's a particular lecturer that adjusted the glasses more than three times. And then the other lecturer said, okay, very good. Excellent delivery. But what is the microscopic, he spoke the English, that I know that if I attempt it, I already think. What is the microscopic to the kidney, to the this, to this? It's not even in the manual that I'm defending. The HOD looked at him and said, didn't you hear him when he said it? Were you not here? And that person asked question, I answered. Everybody clapped. And that person asked question, I answered. Everybody clapped. The man came back again. He said, the concept of the bacteria, to, I could not even pick the English. The OJD, the OJD looked at him again and said, didn't you hear when he said it? The boy said it before. Didn't you hear? And I can't remember when I said it. And that person asked question, they clap for me. He said, excuse me, for the last time, for the last time. It was the HOD that shouted on him. He said, Mr. Johnson, what is really the problem? What is exactly? It was the HOD that started shouting on him. You see? When your enemy are not rising up to fight themselves, you will never be successful. And you cannot command your enemy to rise up to fight against themselves until you know how to pray in the language of the Spirit. The Lord can make them to send a bushment against themselves where you flow in the realm of the Spirit. The Lord God will serve as a man of war. Yakoski Bariata. All the strategy of war, he has it. All the strategy of success, he has it. All the people that want to rise up against you, you know how to silence them. But you need to speak in the language of the mysteries to silence them. Kori Kabosa. Felima Kozisa. Can somebody pray in tongues this morning? Rotuke Pahata. Rekoto Zuzuku. Akaliki Zuzusa. Rakozi Zata. You see, some people are still behaving normal. Did you see? This is a problem. Some people are still behaving normal. Ratoki Hata. Rito Zikepa. Korati Ateto. Sikata. Every mission around your life will be dissolved. Believe this. Kata. Teta. Kelusika. Ratekori. Pakolika. Seketiako. Rakete Yiki. Suketi Ate. Rankopori. Rakakalike. Uli Suzuta. Ranto Kolepa, Rakete Yia, Ruko Kusi Atata. Yes, Rekusi Antahapari. In the name of Jesus. In Jesus' mighty name. Now listen to me. There are mysteries that will never be dissolved until you pray in tongues. You will never be successful until you learn how to dissolve mysteries. Every Opportunity comes with a battle. To go to school comes with a lot of responsibility or school fees. Agree with me? There is no height you want to go in life that does not come with a particular battle. Believe it. But you want every mystery to be dissolved. You see, what I got from that defense and that project shifted my G CGP to another level. If I have failed, you see, the devil has positioned one Johnson because of a lady I have nothing with. And God sees my heart, I'm on the other most I got nothing join me on that lady till tomorrow. We we're close good, but nothing ever joined. I will have failed because of a friendship. If God will not remove the you see, at every junction of your life, 
There are demons and devils waiting for you. You can only dissolve them. Many of you believe that even the school where you attend, some of you have shop, don't worry. Especially when your shop have some neighbors, there will be one neighbor that will be pouring water. The one that will offend you. You just know that the devil has positioned this one here. Pray more in tongues. One thing that happens when you pray more in tongues, God confuses your enemy because they don't understand. Number two is that God empowers you with the right wisdom to do what you are supposed to do. When I gave my life to Christ, coming from the Muslim background, many of you don't believe that I can read Quran and interpret. Many of you don't believe it. Uh, I gave my life to Christ not long ago. Some of you were born again before me. I'm just a privilege of grace to be here. You don't let me tell you the year I gave my life to Christ, but it's not, it's not as long as your own. When I gave my life to Christ, that time they picked one of my brother who asked money, picked me and took me to the bush. And we're going inside the bush. We are going. He said, you are not afraid. I said, afraid of what? After they have stabbed me. Yeah, they stabbed me. Yeah. The sky is still dirty now. What was my offense? I gave my life to Christ. And I was taken inside the bush. So I never considered alternative. Some of us are suffer for these things. This thing work. Inside the bush, we went there and we saw one man, very big and fat and smelly. It is beer, beer white, and he says it's the one thing to one thing. <laughs> My elder brother was kneeling down. I never knew. My elder brother was kneeling and kneeling. I never knew. But can I tell you this? And believe what I'm about to say right now. Right where my other brother was kneeling. He said, Need I said, No, me, I won't kneel. The man said, They should give me a chair. So they brought you. I sat. He asked me, and He said, How come? And why you were there? My tongue was not stopped. And the man knows that if he asks a question and I'm not able to answer, you will get more money from my brother. Because they believed that he was supposed to be able to defeat me. Are we together? Sister Blessing, can you go backward? Thank you. You are distracting me. Thank you. If you have something to discuss, please only shoot to the back. Are we together? Thank you. Are we sit together? I will spoil business if I win. And business will be good if I lose. Because they believe that this is the only person I should be afraid of that will make me to say, you are no more a Christian. That was, that was the game. So when we got to the place, he said, why are you not doing this thing again? I quoted one thing from him from the Quran. When I quoted that to him, the man did When I quoted that to him, the man did like this. He asked another question. I quoted the same things because I'm on the altar. I've quoted all those things. I still remember them. I quoted another one. When I quoted this one, he said, leave this guy. It was the man that said, leave this boy. This boy. He said, leave this boy. This boy, leave him. And the man started lying. How did this one, did this one? He, he lied some light, light one, light, light one. That's how God delivered me. But I was praying in tongues and God was inspiring me with the right answer to give to him. When you pray more in tongues, you enjoy a lot of inspirations. Shall I show you scriptures? Jude 20. He said, Beloved, building up your faith in your most holy faith. One thing that builds up your faith is the inspiration of the Spirit. Jude 1 20. Are we there? He said, Beloved, who is there? Building up your faith in your most holy faith. He said, What? Pray in what? In the Holy Ghost. When you pray more in the language of the Spirit, it, it gives you a lot of inspiration. And that inspiration makes you to be successful. Can I hear say amen to that? Number three. A spiritual impartation. Spiritual what? Romans chapter 1.
and verse 11. And this is how we stop this morning. Romans chapter 1 and verse 11. He said, For I long to see you. Paul speaking here. To the Roman church, he said, For I long to see you that might impart you with some spiritual necessity so that you might be what? Establish here, you can replace that word with success. Everybody that is established is what? Is successful. If you are maritally established, what are you? Successful. If you are financially established, what are you? In every department of your life that you journey into the realm of establishment, one thing is key. It means you are successful in that area. Having understand the word of God, operating in it in power, Having understand the dimension of his spirit, praying more in the Holy Ghost. Number three is trust God that you'll be empowered with the right graces and the right impartation for you to be successful. There are people who have already traveled the journey where you are. Let me talk to you about impartation. Oh, no. There are people who have actually gone ahead in the journey where you are. Ah, the Lord is saying I should share one. Sometimes ago, I was fasting and praying. I started fasting from January 1 to January 7th that year. And while I was praying, Oh, I don't want to look at early. Anyway, I have the liberty of the Spirit to say this, but I've never shared this before. On the seventh day of that fast, the Lord told me, I was in Delta State then. The Lord told me, He said, Travel to Elisha. There's a particular man there at that time. He was 104 years old. How many years old? How many years old? He was the last person on heart that worked directly with the CAC founder called Ayodele Babalola. They called that man Baba Baba Jide. This man, if you read through his story, he has his stories on Gogo. Beautiful and anointed man of God. But at that time, he was 104 years old. The man could not see and if they need to talk to him there's a young man who stand beside him all you need to do if you visit him is they will shout your name David they will shout your name into the ears of the man I travel from Delta State if you know the distance between Delta State to uh, Elisha it's more than 13 hours and how to break the journey and all of that. And I got there in the night and they told me I can't see he's late that he's sleeping. How to travel again to go and sleep in Elif. I woke up very early in the morning to go there. I was still a young man then. This thing happened some years back. We have not come to Abuja at all. And when I got in, when it was my turn, the young man beside him shouted, David! But why I was on that queue? Why I was on that queue? All the people that came, they will put the man's hand inside oil and he will lay it on the, he will lay it upon them. They will put the man's hand inside oil, he will lay it upon them. The man did not respond. But when they got to my turn, as they shouted my name, the man shook. The man that did not open his eyes, while he was attending to the rest, he opened his eyes. And he looked at me. And he carried his hand by himself. Place that hand inside the oil and place it upon my head. And the people that were there pursue me. They say, Go, oh, God, go, is enough. It's okay. <laughs> so, uh, I'm supposed to be happy. I was angry. I said, I came from Delta. You will tell Baba to talk to me. 13 hours to come here. It's not to you. I want to ask Baba some questions. And then while I was coming truly, I already prepared some few things I was going to ask the man. The man never said anything. They asked me to leave. I was not happy. So I carried my distance. I was looking for a way to look, go back to Delta State. And the Lord spoke to me. I still have that jota tea now. He said, for this, for this, this will begin to happen in your life. 
He said, for this to this, this will get to happen in your life. Everything that God says since that time began to work. Amazing thing about it is that the day is exactly one year that I visited that man, that man died. But everything that the Lord said that came in through that vessel to me is still at work in my life till date. The very first prayer. Bishop Oideko ever pray for me directly. Not praying general prayer. Now look at me face to face and pray. I will never forget it like that. He said, may the glory of God envelope you. I might be foolish in interpretation because I'm immature in some things. You can't deny there's something around. I might be, I might be foolish. I know it. I know it. I might be foolish in interpretation of a lot of things. Ah, but you can't deny it. Because of immaturity, uh, because I've not been in this system for a while. Yeah. I might be foolish in some things. But in this, I know it. Spiritual impartation works. And it works to your advantage to make you successful. Paul said, I long to see you that might put an impartation on you so that you will be established. There are impartations that must come upon you if you will be successful. Believe me. Believe me. Sometimes ago, many years back too, after that initial experience, about two, three months later, the Lord told me, pack your bag. It's time to go to Benin City. And I obey him. Carried my bag and I got to Benin City. They gave me a place to stay. And I was to meet with uh, Archbishop Besson, the house's wife. And then when I got there in Benin City, the Lord told me a specific thing to do. And I obeyed. I, I remember I was using a UB account at that time. What the Lord asked me to do, I did it. I packaged it the way God asked me to. And they brought me before Archbishop Margaret Idaosa. And I knelt down and I placed it in his hand. He, ah, he looked at it. He said, who taught you this? And he said, in the name of Jesus, this becomes your experience. I said, amen. I was happy anyway. I didn't snap one picture. No. That's not what I went there to do. He said, excuse me, man. Let's do something. For what? He said, I'll post on Facebook. They say, I know. No, sir. I wasn't satisfied with what she said. Like I was not satisfied with the initial experience. I said they should lead me to where they buried that bishop in the house. They obeyed me. They took me there. They said don't stay here long because they don't allow people to hang around there for a long time. I said it's true. I won't, I, won't, I won't stay long. So I was looking around. And I was looking for a scripture that would justify what I'm doing. The scripture came to me. He said, when they place a dead child on the tomb of Elisha, he said, the dead bone of Elisha raised the dead. How many of you know that scripture? And I said to myself, I said, the anointing does not die. Even the dead bone still carries the anointing. I laid on that floor. I began to blast in tongues. I blasted in tongues for over 30 something minutes before the security came and arranged me. They don't do me. And they said, get out. But what I wanted, I got. Let God be true and not may be liar. I have the liberty of the spirit to share this. That's I want to say it. This is the very first time I'll say it in my life. My wife did not even know what I'm talking about. I got back to Delta State that day. I remember I was, at the, I was standing in front of the kitchen reading my Bible. I was reading the Gideon Bible, I remember. Reading the Gideon Bible right on the fridge. And I was opening the Bible and I was reading. Let God be true. I stand on the altar of the Most High God. My eyes were clearly open. A carpet rolled towards me. Like a red carpet. I saw Archbishop in the house walk on that carpet. And he told me and he said, you will never lack what you preach. And that carpet rolled back in his agada with that little cap. I'm not telling you what I saw. No, no, I'm not sleeping. I'm reading, 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 reading. The, the carpet rolls roll at me red, I remember. He was dressed in a white agbada with some design with chain. And he walking. He walked under it and he looked at me. He said, you will never lack water bridge. And the thing rolled back. That impartation is still working till now. There are heights and there are dimensions that will never communicate yet until some of us grow to that level. Impartation works. Can I hear you say amen? I have a singular privilege as a privileged pastor 
on this altar this morning to pray for all of us that the Lord will impart us with the grace, the wisdom, the anointing we need to be successful. Can I hear you amen to that? May somebody bless this morning. All right, glory to God. May I request you bow down your head as we pray. If you are not the sound of my voice, you know you are not genuinely born again. You might not even understand all that I'm saying. Make your way right with God today. Or you are one time born again, you backslided. I beg you in the name of Jesus, don't fake it. Come to Jesus today. Yeah. Akoski Bahata. There is no shortcut to God. It's to pass through the gate of salvation. If you are not genuinely born again, may I request you raise up your right hand and I'll pray with you. Are you one time born again, you bastard? May I request you raise up your right hand and I'll pray with you. All right. In the absence of none, may I request you stand to your feet. And if you have your bottle of oil, get it ready. We are going to be having a section of impartation today. I want you to pray just one prayer. That the Lord God of heaven will impart to you for success. Is that a very good prayer? That by the anointing today, you'll be what? Empowered. For what? Do not toy down the pile of impartation. Do not what? It is real. It is genuine. It is evident. There are many things I do that I know is not me. It's just by the privilege of God and the impartation that I have received. There are a lot of stories I can share in that regard. A lot. A lot. A lot. God, bring men away. I met, uh, I met one of our apostles sometimes ago in 2018 and he looked at me, put his left hand upon my head, said some few things. That thing is still working like fire. 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 Oh. Please, lift up your right hand where you are and pray. What impartation do you desire to succeed? You trusting God for wisdom? There will be impartation of the spirit of wisdom. Are you trusting God? Whatever you trust God for, just cry to God that the Lord God of heaven will empower you to succeed. Is that a very good prayer to pray? That the Lord God of heaven will impact you to succeed. That there will be an impartation upon you today to succeed. You will never know failure anymore. What impartation does is that impartation separates you from, a, from, from two sides. Where you are imparted to succeed, you will never know failure anymore. This is it. This is it. Please pray. The Lord will impart you to succeed in that business. The Lord will impart you to succeed in that marriage. The Lord will change the event of your life for good. Lift your voice, please pray. Oh, kasi pa handi ya hata. Ibro di ya mako ziketeli ya dezuzu. Kambari ya teko, ziketeli bahati ya doji. Kuburata linde ke dozu keti ya mandelele zizi. You will never know failure anymore. There is an impartation that makes for business success. There is an impartation that makes for marital success. There is an impartation that makes for academic success. Please pray that the Lord God of heaven will impart to you. Hey, oh, we thank you, Father. In Jesus' mighty name, we are prayed. May I request you place, place your right hand upon your head right now as I pray. Father, I stand by the rod of the higher priesthood today. Stand in the privilege of grace. I stand upon the integrity of your word. By the grace of election of this calling. Every grace needed that people are tasked for in you today to be successful in every department of their life. 
in the name of Jesus the resurrected Lord let the grace be released upon them now in the name of Jesus the impartation you need to be successful today has come there is someone here because of this impartation you begin to enjoy the kind of help you have never seen before in your life every day door you knock from now on begin to open unto you I command the spirit of the living God to come upon you afresh I command the impartation of the Holy Ghost to rest upon everyone here and to everyone under the sound of my voice you will say if your amen will be louder than that of your neighbor in the name of Jesus the resurrected Lord you will never know failure anymore in the name of the Lord Jesus. Everywhere your papers are represented we forbid failure in the name of Jesus Christ. The grace of God goes to work right now and there shall be success in the name of Jesus. You will never know such back anymore. Never would you know a better yesterday anymore. Whatever you lay your hands on shall prosper. <laughs>